Yes, welcome back to Sister Circle Live. It's homecoming week here at Sister Circle. And yesterday we took a trip down memory lane and revisited some of our favorite college memories. And today we're finding out what it's like to be a college student right now. We had the pleasure of sitting down with some dynamic young women from Spelman College. And while we gave them some wisdom and advice, what they gave us in return was immeasurable. Mm. Take a look. We are so very excited to be bridging the gap with these amazingly, beautifully talented women from Spelman College. Welcome to Sister Circle, <laughs> little sisters. How y'all doing? Good. 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 Yes. 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 Oh my gosh, welcome again, young ladies. If you would, please introduce yourselves and tell us your majors. Yes. Absolutely. My name is Leah. I am a junior at Spelman College. I am a political science major. Ooh. And I am from King George, Virginia. Awesome. Yes. Hi, my name is Nia. I am a senior international studies major with yes. global development concentration, and I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. Come on, yes. Midwest. <laughs> Hello, my name is Grace. I am a sophomore English major with a minor in journalism from Kansas City, Missouri. Yes, yeah. awesome. Hi, I'm Avery. I'm a junior economics major from Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, my name is Jordan. I am a junior art major from South Carolina. Yes. yes. South Carolina. Awesome, awesome. We're, again, we're just very happy to just sit down and have a candid conversation. Like, we want y'all to tell us what's going on, <laughs> tell us what's good, what's bad, what's indifferent, and then you guys can chat with us. I mean, we're not experts on life, but we've, mm -hmm. we've lived a little life, huh? No, just, just a little bit. Just a just little, little bit of life. Bit. And both of us uh, are uh, alums of um, HBCUs. Okay. So why Spelman for you ladies? Why did you choose an HBCU? And anybody can go. I personally feel that Spelman in and of itself is a very specific area of excellence mm -hmm. that I wanted to immerse myself in. And I saw a very unique opportunity for me to surround myself with women that are dedicated, that are passionate, that have a mission, a goal, and an understanding of their purpose. Mm -hmm. And I very much so believe that being in an environment where you're around women like that allows you to see even more clearly where you are best suited to thrive. Yes. And so I'm very inspired by the women that are around me, and I'm very inspired to walk further into who I am as a person <laughs> and being in that environment. Yes. And so so that that's why yeah I well that was uh, that was right. spot on right yes, there does anybody else want to add to why you chose an hbcu i um, also went to predominantly white schools throughout elementary school high school all of that and um for a long time spelman was my number one college i wanted to go there like my entire life and then when i got to high school i kind of switched to howard but um, going to Spelman, just every time I walk through those gates, you know, when you just get that feeling that something's right, and I knew I knew that was right for me, so um, I decided to go to Spelman, and I absolutely love it. It was the best decision for me. Yes, yes. All of you get to experience and see black girl magic every single day. Do you ever sit back and say, wow, I'm amongst the greatest of the greats? when you're on campus. Do you, do, you, yes. do you ever take a moment to realize how surreal it is? I actually was just having this conversation with my dad not too long ago, and I was just like, sometimes I forget where I'm at. You yeah. know, it's like an everyday mm -hmm. thing for me to see so many beautiful black women that are grinding in every single day, so talented, amazing. And I kind of forget, like, this is truly a privilege to mm -hmm. be here. Yes. And everyone loves Spelman, but sometimes you forget that I have the privilege to be in this space. So I'm very thankful. Um, to just be surrounded constantly, whether it be in the classroom, my on-campus job, whatever it is, being surrounded by so many amazing black women. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about some of your hopes and what you desire to be and where you see yourselves after this time at Spelman. So I'm a senior, um, and so for the past like few months, all everything that I've been thinking about is like what I'm going to do when I'm graduating. Um, it's been really nerve-wracking, very stressful, but I'm also really excited. I think when you see like the political climate that's happening right now, it gives me more motivation to do something when I graduate and do something that's going to help the like the world and my community. Um, and like my biggest one day, I plan to be the first black female ambassador to China. Yes, um, <laughs> that is my big goal. Um, but going from there, I'm looking at going and working in corporations and their government operations and government relations, um, and then going from there to working in government in like five or six years after okay. I get my law degree. Okay, 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 so, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Those are my hopes, but it's absolutely terrifying because Spelman, it really does, it's like it's like a little comfort, like it's, it's an oasis. Mm -hmm. So like Spelman, I feel like I'm wrapped in a blanket. Everybody's like, 
kind and everybody wants you to achieve. Everybody's like wonderful inside of the campus. And you're in this place where it's all black women, so you don't have to like struggle and fight. And I'm afraid of going into the corporate world and having that experience again and like yeah. being like the only black girl in my community and like, you know, having to do that. So Yeah. Oh, yes, nice. oh, yes, we're talking about what's at stake in 2020 and more when the ladies of Spelman College, with the ladies of Spelman, Spelman College, when we come back, remember, the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Yeah. We got our own Sister Circle Cheers. Well, you, the cheers never stop. The cheers never stop. What are you looking for in our next president? Mm -hmm. what, are you, what are your concerns? Do you hear your concerns being met when you hear the different platforms from the different candidates? What concerns you about what we see right now? I know that's a weighted, those are weighted questions, but we need to hear your voices because I don't think that we get to hear your voices enough. So many people are talking for you. I think that for a very long time, America has thrived on the idea that someone has to be on the top and that there's people that have to be on the bottom. Mm. And I think more than anything, one thing that I'm looking for in a candidate is someone that thrives on compassion and the idea that every single life that exists here has divinity and is divinely here for a reason and a purpose and is confident and, and secure enough to lean into that truth Ooh. and really listen and have the strength and the ability to set their pride aside and actually listen in on what people have to say and listen into what it is to the people at the quote unquote bottom are saying, mm -hmm. rather than being fearful and protecting the people at the top mm -hmm. only wow. and being afraid to listen to everyone's voice. Mm -hmm. Because I think that it is there that we actually make progression. It's there that we understand each other better. It's there that we create community and collectivism in a way that is impactful and efficient. Yeah. Um, not only for just our relationship to ourselves within our country, but our relationship with our entire global community. Yeah. Mm. How many of you here are going to be first time voters? How many of you are first time voters? Oh, wow. Wow, mm. Grace, how does that feel? It feels very interesting uh, watching that last election that kind of happened. I, I went to sleep knowing that Hillary Clinton was going to be did. my yeah. 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 We all did. Yeah. <laughs> I just really knew that. And just to see how things turn just, just makes me feel that my vote is even more important during this yes. election. Yes. That I need to make sure that I'm doing research on the candidates, understanding their platforms, understanding what they really stand about, so that when I do go to a uh, to the polls and vote that it really means something and I understand what's gonna come for our nation in years yes. to come. My goodness, mm -hmm. my goodness. You know, we, we, all, we always ask the question, what are we looking for in a president? But what are we looking for in our state representatives? Mm. What are we looking for for that person who is giving us that voice and who's actually voting for the things that we are supposed to believe mm. in? So Jordan, I'm gonna go to you. So what, what type of thing are you looking for in a representative? Um, similar, similar to what Leah said, just about listening, I think that is a major point. If you're going to be representing your entire state, you have to care about the ideas that everyone has and not just yourself. So yeah. you're representing your entire state. Um, I just think we need somebody that is very compassionate and cares because just for example, with the um, latest abortion laws and things that were going on in Georgia, I'm just studying about that and learning how those um, those decisions impact everyone around us. And mm -hmm. just being very um, cognizant of that and just taking that in consideration how everyone is going to be affected right, by it. Right, right. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna switch it up just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, on campus you all are discovering who you are, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, you're discovering the type of woman you are and who, are you, who you are becoming. But dating flows into that as well. <laughs> and, seeing who your partner's gonna be and all of that stuff. Is that top of mind right now? What are the challenges that you face and trying to navigate, you know, school and then being social at the same time? Avery, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, boys at this age. Right. I can't, I can't. <laughs> no, seriously. And I think especially being at Spelman, we just have like a different mindset and a different yes. mentality mm -hmm. in terms of like maturity and what we expect from our relationships, mm -hmm. like both friendships and dating wise. Right. And I just think that boys like to play too much. And <laughs> I, just, I don't know, I personally, I don't have the time for it. Right. I don't have the patience for it, but 
Yeah, just kind of focusing on myself and who it is I want to be and solidifying that first yes. before trying to pursue like a long-term relationship. So good. That plan to me. Good, <laughs> okay, but let me ask you guys, let me ask you, you guys go to an all-girls school. Mm -hmm. So does it make it that much more difficult to kind of weave into the dating scene and try to, you know, keep your studies first, but yet like, oh, I saw this boy at more house yesterday. I went to the library, he dropped the book. You know what I mean? <laughs> so tell us about those challenges that come and trying to keep your mind on the studies. I guess growing up with older parents, I have like a, a love for love and old school love. Yeah. And I feel like my expectations seem to be too high for what no, these guys no, want. Not. And um, <laughs> they don't really, it's not like a lot of dating, traditional dating going on. It's right. not, and that's what I want. Yeah. And so. Well, wait on it until it's right, yeah, baby, yeah. honey. Let me tell you, you know, something. No more house men, too. Really? <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, I just want to say, we want to say that we're very proud mm -hmm. so to, proud. to sit across from you and listen to just intellect personified mm -hmm. and just to see how beautiful you are and how gracious you are we just want to say thank you for being yes. strong amazingly beautiful black women yes we want to say that yes. to you do people do, do do you feel that you get that enough from your older sisters in general no i don't i think that say it i yes. don't <laughs> i don't know i just we definitely, we don't hear that enough. And like, it feels really good to hear people say that they're proud of us, you know? Cause, goodness, sorry. It's okay. Um, it's oh, it's okay. Right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry okay. for feeling. Um, right. Just like at the time in our life that we're at, things are so confusing and they're so difficult. And like, it just feels really good to hear someone say like, I'm proud of you and I'm proud oh. of what you're doing because it's all been like pretty negative feedback. Like, oh, you're not doing this and this person is like here in her life and she got an A on the test and you maybe didn't. Like, so it feels really good to hear like, I'm still proud of you no matter where you're at. In life. Right, because we are. Yes. And you matter wherever you are in your wherever lives. You, you matter. That, that's what you need to hear. This conversation matters. Yes. You need to know that we, we absolutely, you guys, you, you influence us. You, you encourage us yes, because yes. of the way you go after life. Yes. I didn't have the type of grind that you all have. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is just a beautiful thing. So yes, we are extremely so proud, proud, so proud. of each and every one of yes. you. So you met you you represent. You know, a thousand women, at, 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 at each of you represents a thousand to 1,500 women mm -hmm. at, at Spelman. So you're representing everybody. Yes. It's and, amazing. And we need to serve you so that you all can serve the next generation. Yes. And we all need, we all need to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we as big sisters, we as black women in the community, what can we do to serve you all more? I think reaching out, reaching out helps a lot because I mean I understand that as older women you guys have busier schedules and things of that nature and so do we as like students on campus but it really feels nice when people check in on us and be like hey I'm just thinking about you I hope you have a great week today or like hey if there's anything on your mind I'm always available to talk like that really does help a lot. Wow that's good that's good. Wow mm. that was powerful and impactful but yes. after the break the ladies have some questions for us? Yay. Oh, you almost took me out of it. Right. What are some questions you have for us? I hope we can answer them. I hope so. <laughs> yes. Anyone? How so. important has sisterhood been in you guys' lives? Oh, yeah. Wow. Let me tell you, sisterhood comes in different forms, shapes, sizes, colors, aspects, reasons, and seasons. Yes. I have four natural born sisters and we love each other through thick, thin, good, bad, the ugly, and all of it. But when, what I found, and this is not even just about Sister Circle, but I'm gonna concentrate on that right now, I found another three set of women that I can still pour the same type of love into as if they were my blood. Mm -hmm. And I love them unconditionally, and it's about circles. It's about who you choose, and it's about finding like-minded people who are on on, on the same direction or on the same journey. Because when you change your mind, you change your thinking, you change your thinking, you change your circles, you change your circles, you change your circumstance. Mm -hmm. So when you decide to do that, sisterhood has a whole new look and a whole new value on it. So when you decide to call someone friend, 
just make sure they're not there for just that season. Make sure there's someone who edifies you. Always make sure you're not the smartest person in the room. Make sure you have someone that you can always learn from because we're always constantly teaching each other. So sisterhood is more just about, it's more than just about blood. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about that connection and that feeling and how you edify each other. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want to know from you all how you all have pushed past the things that you have gone through and how you all have wow. turned those stories into opportunities wow. for mm, like beautiful. breakthroughs. What a, an amazing question. I'll start. Um, I just started therapy in May and I speak very candidly about yeah. going to see my therapist and I think because I've spoken candidly, I know, not, I don't even think, I know that I have helped people get onto couches or to consider going to counseling. So my push through is being vulnerable enough to share it, yeah. but being brave enough to go, because I had put it off for so many years. And just because we have these lives and we're on television and we have all this success, it's a lot of stuff going on. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a businesswoman, I'm a very sensitive woman, and I got a lot going on. So to help me unravel that, of course with God's help, he has people that are professional that can help sift through it, help mm. me sift through it. So I had to go back to those times that quote unquote traumatized me to realize that's why I'm like this and that's why I rationalize like this. So now that I recognize that, I'm using that to say, stop in your tracks, Rashawn, what are you doing? Is this an unrelenting standard? Like now I'm like putting it all together. But be okay with therapy and be okay mm -hmm. with talking to somebody, be okay with blogging about it and talking about those traumatic situations that you've since turned around and you're helping someone. Giving is the rent we pay for living. Mm -hmm. So you have to continue to give to people in any, every facet of your life, every facet of your life. Your main goal in this life, I think, is to pull another Spellman sister right here and then catapult her forward. Or if she's not a Spellman sister, but you have so many little sisters mm -hmm. that you can start mm -hmm. now. So yeah. I have done that, and therapy has been the way oh, for me. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. For me, it was allowing myself to succeed. Mm. For a lot of people, they have the feel, fear of failure, but a lot of people, they haven't even heard of fear of success. Yeah. But it's a very real thing. And um, I found myself in a situation where I would slow down so other people can catch up. Mm. But I... I learn for myself that it's okay to succeed. It's okay to live in my purpose and it's okay to, to live in my glow up. And it's okay to not let other people's barriers become my obstacle. Mm. And I'm finally growing into my own ability to accept me from my yesness. Yes. And it's okay to be yes, because I'm supposed to be, because that's how my father made me. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be successful. I'm not supposed to slow down so someone can catch up. I'm not supposed to dim my light because it blinds someone else. And you're not supposed to do the same. Yeah. Wow. Ladies, we thank you so much for being yes. here today. Did you get something out of it? Because we certainly did from you all. Yes, it was amazing. I got, look, I got a lot of work to do. Yes. Yes. You hear me? But we're, again, we're very proud of you. We're yes. so glad to have shared space with you to bridge the gap, if only for a short time. But I believe this is the beginning of a much needed conversation yes. and series that maybe we can continue. Definitely. But again, we love you. Yes. We're proud of you. Very proud. And from this day forward, we'll be here for you. Just even if it's just a check check in, how your grades? Everything good? That's right. Okay, baby. I'll talk to you later. But thank you again, ladies. Thank we appreciate you. your time thank today. You. The amazing women of Spellman College. Yes. yes. Wow! Yes. Wow! 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 Yes. Thank you again. Yes. Trudy, was you gonna go into a revival? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got with the with the baby so good. Yeah. How many nuggets you and Rashawn gave yeah. them? It was just Devil amazing. Rexing. Wow. But of course, the ladies had questions mm. for you guys oh, as well. What did I say? And uh, <laughs> Nia asked, based on the themes from Selena's "I Am Your Woman" album, oh. for us as Black women, love, pain, and forgiveness are critical themes in our daily lives. How do you build? a stronger relationship as a black woman with love and forgiveness as a focal point through the inevitable pain. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you just went all the way to the belly of the beast. Oh, okay, so they want both Quad and Selena to answer that question. Okay. My God, today. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> well, you have to understand that love, pain, and forgiveness is one full cycle. 
okay, and that they that one is connected to the other. Mm -hmm. So without one, you you normally don't get to skip skip the skip the uh, the cycle. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, just personally, for me, um, getting through the pain, even though. Um, uh, getting through the pain while I'm going through the progress, I mean the process, is being about, it has been, uh, I have, it has been instrumental for me to love myself through it, love mm -hmm. myself through it. Because in doing that, I give myself reservation. Mm -hmm. I, it's okay for me to make, make mistakes. What is my talking today? It's okay for me to make mistakes. It is okay for me to not be okay. So allowing myself, um, giving myself reservations and loving myself through the pain, not others, not the focal point on others, but the focus on you. Absolutely. That's how you get through your thing. Um, reframe that question for me, or just state the question again. How do, how do you, can you, yeah, let's go back. How do you get through pain mm -hmm. and, forget, and forgiveness, pain and, forgiveness. And, and moving on in life? Well, just understanding that we are all human. Mm -hmm. I think that's as, as a, um, it's a starting point, knowing that I too make mistakes. I'm not always perfect. I don't always do it right. I don't always say it right. I don't always give it the right way. You understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I think when you know that, you're able to take yourself out of your shoes and place yourself into someone else's shoes mm -hmm. and be a little bit more uh, empathetic when it comes down to the mistakes that they may have made. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that definitely helps to uh, try to understand each other mm -hmm. and it helps to, uh, you know, aid, aid and assist in the process of forgiveness. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's how you wrap that thing with a bow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you again to the Spelman College students and all of the young ladies who participated in Bridging the Gap. To watch the full interview, go to our YouTube channel. It is so good. Mm -hmm. Okay.